a medieval army on the march was a city on the move. No expense was spared to keep knights and nobles in the lap of luxury. Knights lived in luxurious tents called pavilions, which had all of their furnishings. Proper chairs and tables and tableware, real beds with fine linens, even wall hangings. All this furniture had to be transported, and that's on top of what was needed for combat. Weapons and armor needed an army of artisans to maintain them. The armorer's job on campaign was one of maintenance, constantly repairing, knocking out dents, simply changing straps or replacing rivets that had broken. If you think of the knight as a race car driver, the armor is his chief mechanic. Without him, he would not be able to function. Also following an army was a band of opportunistic civilians, the camp followers, all vying to sell their services and goods to the soldiers. When on the march, most of the thousands of soldiers were mounted. Each knight would have at least six horses, all needing grooms, farriers and fodder. The royal household brought with them their clerks, their priests, essential for men who feared they might die in battle, and of course, their cooks. The common soldiers subsisted mainly on bread and a thick soup called pottage. It was an altogether different story for the knights. A knight on campaign would expect the best food. So we have game, we have fine meats, we have fruit when it's in season, always cooked, because food is tied in with health as well. That's very important. And I'm just finishing off a dish here of spiced meatballs with a red wine and pine nut sauce. French and English armies could be on campaign for months on end, manoeuvring and skirmishing until they took to the field for a decisive battle. <laughs> 